as a follow-up to a video I did earlier in the week talking about what I've learned from seeing and watching, observing 1,500 or over 1,500 VO2 max tests, what I thought I'd do is a couple of a breakdown series, a couple of videos going through some data, taking you through some actual data from the lab. What do we see as exercise intensity increases? What are the physiological responses to exercise? Respiratory system, cardiovascular, muscular, how do we pull it all together? Look at things like blood lactate, ventilation, what our heart rate's doing, all of these things into one. So I'm going to break it down into a couple of chunks. This one is all about the ventilation side of things, respiratory, what is happening in the lungs as exercise intensity goes up. Hopefully you enjoy it, but without any further ado, let's get into it. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Nick here talking science of endurance and everything sports science in general. Thanks to everyone who has been subscribing to the channel, but if you haven't and you're watching for the first time or you've been watching the videos and enjoying the content, make sure you do consider hitting that big red subscribe button down below. Keep up to date with all the latest content on the channel and head over to Instagram at NJ underscore sports science. I'll put it in the corner here. Head over there, check out some of the different content we have over on Instagram, getting very, very close to a thousand followers. And it's also a great place to directly send me a message, send a DM with a question about the science of endurance or sports science, or even a suggestion of a video you want to see in the future on the channel as well. So go to head over there, go check it out and looking forward to seeing some of those messages come through shortly. In terms of today's video, as I mentioned in the introduction, doing a bit of a series about some of the data from the lab. So what I wanted to break down and this, all the data I'll be using uh, throughout this mini series or, or set of videos is my own data from my own testing middle of last year. This is actually my pre-testing data before I went into my uh, preparation for Bustleton Half Ironman and leading up to that. So it's by no means uh, amazing data. It's not top-end elite data by any means. It's pretty average, and that's kind of why I wanted to use it because it represents a large amount of what we see with the typical person who does come in to see us in a lab. So I'm going to take you through the respiratory part today and talk about what is happening from the lung side of things. When we look at VO2 max and we look at oxygen consumption, the first part is that air intake. How much air can we get in? What actually happens as exercise intensity changes through a ramp style test? So as it, a step test, intensity goes up and up and up each stage. What is happening? What is going on? What are some of the changes we see? And then also how does that impact our total ability to take in transport and utilize oxygen overall? So without any further ado, I'm gonna switch over to a bit of a screen share now. So you'll be able to see exactly what's going on. As I mentioned, this is my data from my pre-testing in July last year leading into Bustleton uh, Half Ironman. You can see here, uh, first tab I want to show you today is the averages tab. And I'll refer to this a few times, but this is basically a summary of all the data from my VO2 max test. So we use the three minute ramp test protocol. You can see in the middle here, I started at 90 watts, nice and comfortable. My cycling, and this is a bike test. My cycling is definitely my weakest. So we started nice and low there. But every three minutes, we went up by 30 watts. So you can see the time on the left-hand side uh, in column A, wattage in column G here. Every three minutes, we went by 30 watts. I got all the way through to, partway through 270. So about a minute and a half into 270 before I maxed out and couldn't do any more. Very unfortunate. I only hit 59.1, very close to hitting a relative VO to max of 60, which um, on the bike, I wasn't actually expecting to be that good. So I was actually pretty happy with it. But what I'm really interested in today is the respiratory part. Let's talk lungs. How do we actually get the air in in the first place? And you'll notice here, we peaked right at the end of the test at 171.3 liters of air per minute. This column represents our ventilation. I've spoken on the channel before. Ventilation is the amount of air, the total amount of air we can get in to the system and take in per minute. We're just talking air in general. There is obviously oxygen in there, but there's hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, a bunch of other stuff that we don't necessarily use or need also mixed in with that. Out of that air that comes in, so out of this 171 liters, only 21% of that at sea level is going to be oxygen, or close enough to. Not a massive amount. So being able to bring in lots of air, in first thought, is going to be a useful process. And I touched on that in a video talking about does actually breathing more total increase your oxygen consumption? Not always, but it's the type of thing that gives me best chance to get the oxygen into the system. The, the more ventilation I can generate, the better it comes in. And we have an interest, interesting relationship between our ventilation here and what we call our respiratory frequency or respiratory rate, which is this RF value. It says liters per minute here, which is incorrect. It's actually breaths per minute we're looking at, but this is just the uh, the, the template that we use to, to upload the data really quickly in the lab circumstance and generate a whole bunch of these graphs you can see along, along the bottom tabs here. But what we're looking at from a respiratory frequency perspective is how many breaths we're taking per minute. And as you can see, I get very, very close to 60. So 57.7, Plus have two breaths per minute. Again, this is an average over a 30 second time window. This one here, hence why the 0.7 breaths per minute, it's an average over that time. But I'm getting very close to a breath a second, which would be that genuine 60. Now, how do these interact and look? First of all, let's have a look at ventilation. So 
as exercise intensity goes up, so we started at 90 watts at the beginning of the test on the left-hand side here. This is time on the x-axis and ventilation in liters per minute of air on the y-axis. So as, as time goes on, obviously exercise intensity went up by 30 watts every three minutes until we got to 270N. You can clearly see here, ventilation increases as exercise intensity increases. Fantastic. We know that at low intensity, we don't have to breathe as much. As intensity goes up, there's a greater oxygen demand. So the, the muscle needs more oxygen. So therefore, we're going to supply it. And the first part of that process is taking more air and breathing more. So as we see, starting off 20 to 25 liters, uh, liters per minute, very, very low. Resting is anything usually between sort of 6 to 10 liters per minute, depending on your lung capacity. Um, obviously, I was pedaling at 90 watts at this point. So it would have come up if we showed that progression. But we started recording as the test begun. And as exercise intensity goes up, we have a pretty sort of consistent rise really until about this point here. Then all of a sudden we go bang, shoot up in terms of ventilation in the space of the last four minutes of the test. So really the last stage, if you like, uh, of the test 240 watts leading into 270, we go from a ventilation of 84.6 liters. You can see it there highlighted in that little black box. I know it might be a bit small on your screen, but I'll call them out. Uh, 84.6 liters of air coming into lungs, which is a fair bit. In the space of four and a half minutes, we go up to 171.3 liters of air per minute. Really struggling to be able to use that option. So we're trying to just get as much supply in as we can to give us best chance. Again, it's not necessarily gonna dictate how much we use at the working muscle, but a greater supply is gonna give us best opportunity to use that 21% um, and, and just turn things over, get the air, just get the air in and get the oxygen circulating our system at least, whether we use it at the end or not, really. It, it's then also trying to compensate for a bit of that, that acidity building up from a bit of lact lactic acid in the legs. As the intensity goes up, we're well and truly past threshold at this point. So high blood lactate concentration is also a consideration. Large amount of CO2 as a result of producing an, uh, producing an aerobic energy anyway. Get my, get my words stumbling over here. So we see a dramatic increase. Now in terms of how that, how that increase is majorly coming about, I wanna take you to that respiratory frequency graph um, and what we're talking about with the, the breaths per minute side of things. You can see here, same sort of progression where it's reasonably flat and consistent, start to see a bit of an increase and then that more rapid increase towards the end. You can see we're sort of hovering around 20 breaths per minute early on in the test as we get to the middle part, still sort of 20 breaths per minute, but ventilation was going up. So what is actually occurring to cause that, that rise? Well, I'm just breathing deeper. I'm taking deeper breaths or getting more air in per breath. That's what we call your tidal volume. How much air are you breathing in per breath multiplied by the number of breaths you take per minute, so that respiratory frequency, this one here, equals our total ventilation in liters of air per minute, which is this graph uh, that we're looking at before, all the way up to 171 at the end of the test. So you can see here, I'm pretty much breathing in 20 breaths per minute all the way through the first sort of nine, 10 ish minutes, even right up to oh, probably, I'm going to say about this point here, 10 and a half minutes in is where things start to increase a little bit more. I'm not changing how often I'm breathing, I'm just deep in, breathing more deeply. But then what happens? Why does respiratory rate all of a sudden start to go up partway through the test? Well, our lungs are only so big. My lungs can only breathe in so much air per breath. So at some point, this point here, we start to see it increase. But definitely from this one that I'm circling now, really at the 15 minute mark, as we increase to 240 watts, the change from 210 to 240, you can see here a dramatic change in, I mean, the last four minutes of the test, we saw ventilation go up sort of dramatically from 80 liters to 170 liters. We see my respiratory rate go from 30 breaths per minute pretty much almost to 60 breaths per minute in the space of four minutes. Why? Can't take in any more air per breath, so I have to breathe faster to get that turnover happening and more air circulating per minute. Again, leading to best chance of distributing that oxygen, but it doesn't have, it doesn't guarantee anything. It's just that first part, that breathe in part. Um, overall, you, you, like I said, we, we're gonna see this trend majority of the time in most people. I mean, our lungs at some point throughout this test are only gonna be so big, you can only feel them so much. Tidal volume plateaus. It happens, it, it does happen towards the end of the test. All throughout the early stages though, it's more about just taking those big deeper breaths. And you notice this in the field as well when you're out training, doing any sessions. As you're chipping away a long, slow, steady state, you feel like you're breathing pretty comfortably. As the intensity goes up, respiratory rate goes up because we can't get any more air in per breath at those high intensities so we, uh, than our maximum level. So we just have to breathe more frequently to do it. So that's a bit of a summary of the respiratory response. If you have any questions, um, if you have any questions about the data and what we actually see from a, as exercise intensity goes up, what does what does ventilation do? What does respiratory rate do? What are the lungs interacting like in terms of the system? Let me know in the comments down below. Always happy to help and answer those questions. But hopefully, I've sort of covered a little bit around the science and the data behind it. Measuring things in the lab can actually help us understand a little bit better about what is the respiratory system's role 
in actually using and transporting oxygen. So heading into the next video, we're gonna talk more about the cardiovascular system, our heart rate in particular, what does that do across uh, the course of the test interacting with how much blood we can pump out per beat. Then we'll move into a, another video talking about FeO2 majorly, the usage of oxygen part, which I won't talk about too much here, and how does that all interact in terms of VO2 max? And we'll look at some of the other graphs in future videos as well. So if you're enjoying this video and you're looking forward to the next ones, make sure you are subscribed to keep up to date with when I do put these videos up talking about the graphs and the actual uh, data we're collecting from the lab test. Make sure you are subscribed so you are up to date with all of that. Head over to Instagram as well. What else do you want to see on this channel? Or if anything, just go check out some other content that I put up on Instagram, some different stuff, what I'm doing day to day, some of my training regime, what's happening in the lab. That's all over at, N at NJ underscore sports science. I'll put it in the bottom corner here. Go check that out on Instagram. We are getting very, very close to two and a half thousand followers on YouTube here and very close to a thousand followers on Instagram. So it'd be great if we could tick both those benchmarks off by the end of the year. I think it's definitely achievable. We're not far off. So keep sharing the content with, uh, with people that you know. Keep growing this great community we've got. Really appreciate the support on the channel so far. I'm going to leave it there for today. Hopefully you got something out of me showing some of the data. That's all we've got. And we'll see you in the next one.